Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where a Karen gets arrested for hitting a child. Our next Reddit post is from Heather Lee. I had a baby boomer in front of me in line at Dairy Queen. She insisted that she was a blizzard expert and there was simply not enough chocolate pieces in her blizzard and she went in to complain to whoever was in charge. She's going on and on with this poor teenager worker. The teenager is calmly explaining that they make them all the same, it's a standard procedure, etc. But this woman is now yelling at the teen. So I walk past the woman and put money in the teen's tip jar. I hadn't even gotten ice cream yet. The woman looked at me and then turned back and yelled some more at the teen. I put more money in the tip jar. The teen smiles at me. The woman can't think of what to say to me and stops yelling because I'm looking at her dead in the eye like the ATM is over there. I can go all night. The more you yell at this teenager, the more money she makes. If you're a longtime fan of my channel, then you know that I love video games. So naturally, I'm excited to be sponsored by the mobile game Hero Wars, which you can download using the link in the description. Hero Wars is a fantasy-themed mobile game where you can create a party of unique heroes to take down baddies and collect loot. There's a hero for everyone. Vampires, knights, wizards, and hey, it's even got a few furries. There's tons of crazy enemies to fight, like elemental beasts and demon lords. Hey, what can I say? I'm a sucker for games with magic swords and dragons and stuff. Who doesn't want to be a cool wizard, man? Join the game now and get a super chest with five top heroes, one of which is a secret, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan this QR code or download the game from the link below the video in the description. Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. My parents divorced about two years ago and my mother fell in love with a Korean man. Now, at first, I didn't like him because I was a rebellious teen, but after a while we hung out and got along really, really well. He's a really nice guy, and the only thing that would be considered bad is that he's very, very religious. Now, I personally don't believe in what he believes in, but I respect his beliefs and he respects mine. He's a manager at a local nail salon. You know, the ones with the women with the fake names and stuff. Yeah, turns out those are actually real, and the people who work there are surprisingly nice. Now, I spent months learning Korean for my stepdad because his English was awful. Like, he would mix up very simple words, so he mostly spoke Korean. Now, legally, I can't work at the salon because of the products they use, the physical contact, and the skills required. However, I can help out after school, which is what I usually did. One day, this entitled woman walked in with her son, who appeared to be about 10 years old. This woman sits down in one of the waiting chairs. She plops down and pulls out her phone. Keep in mind, she has this like, can I see the manager haircut, so I already know where this is gonna go. At this point, my stepdad asked me if I could take her and I went to see what she wants. I smile and oblige because I love helping out. As I head back towards the Karen, I notice that her entitled kid is touching my stepfather's shrine that we have in the store. So we have a sign on the shrine that specifically says that no one should touch it. This kid is playing with it though, picking things up and shaking things. I kindly asked the kid to stop because he may not have known what it was and he might have thought that it was a toy. The kid drops the shrine on the floor and glares at me. I rush over to see if it's okay, because it's a wooden base shrine with some metal in it for decoration. It's fine, thank god, but suddenly I get a tap on my shoulder. Excuse me, but my son was playing with that. I turn around, and what do you know, this whale of a woman has her hands on her hips, giving me a death glare, visibly upset. I calmly say in my best customer service voice, Ma'am, this is not a toy. In fact, it's... She cut me off. I don't give a damn what it was. He was playing with it, so give it back. I'm a bit flustered, so I try to reason with her. Keep in mind that there's now other people sitting in the waiting chairs watching this. Also, my stepdad started watching me, and I didn't want to upset him. I said, Ma'am, please listen to me. What your child almost damaged was a religious shrine. Out of respect, can you please tell him to stop? The entitled parent wasn't happy about this at all. Don't you dare tell me how to raise my child. She starts swearing at me, telling me that I'm a mother effer, a b-word, ugly, etc. I'm used to this kind of stuff going to high school. I kindly ask her to lower her voice because I didn't want to disturb the other customers. Then this woman did something that I never could have even imagined. 
Now, keep in mind that I have bad acne. Like, it's all over my face, so randomly, one of my pimples could pop open if it's hit hard enough. This entitled mother slapped me across the face, claiming that I was disrespectful to her and that she was gonna call the cops. One of the men in the waiting room stood up, noticing that blood was rushing down my face, presumably from the slap. It was just a pimple that had popped open, but oh boy did it look bad for her. The man said that she had just committed some kind of child abuse. The entitled mother jerked her head back and said, What are you, some kind of cop? And yeah, as luck would have it, he pulled a badge out of his pocket, revealing that he was actually from the local police department. He immediately put this woman under arrest for assault of a minor. The entitled mother's face goes white. After the Karen was escorted to a police car that had been called in, the entitled kid was taken home by his grandma. The kid had to watch his own mother getting hauled off by police. I kind of feel bad for the entitled kid, because he was just taught wrong. As the entitled mother was being driven away, I flipped her off and smiled. I resumed work after that with the biggest grin on my face. That's karma for you. Our next Reddit post is from Immortal Agent ETA. About five years ago, my sister, who's older than me by a few years, had a daughter. My mother was not a good parent, and that quality seemed to be passed on to my sister. I'm single and my sister has a fiancé. He's pretty nice and isn't a bad person at all. For the first few months, I helped out a lot with their daughter. I'm an aerospace engineer and I work from home most of the time. My niece spent most of her days at my house, with her dad picking her up in the evening to take her back to their house. When she was about four or five months old, her mom held a massive dinner party, which ended with my niece getting very sick. Apparently, they had made a fire in the yard, and she had gotten smoke inhalation. This coincided with the start of an extremely important business trip for my brother-in-law that he couldn't miss. He didn't want his daughter to be home alone because he knew that his wife would just party most of the time that he was out. So, my niece stayed with me for most of that time, and I grew quite attached to her, and her health made a full recovery. Fast forward to about three years ago, and my sister's husband divorced her because she had been so negligent. But he couldn't prove anything, so they both shared custody. About three months ago, my niece started kindergarten. However, she was kicked out after they learned that she hadn't been vaccinated. Not only that, but she got measles. Her dad got her vaccinated in the end, but a following court battle saw her lose custody over her daughter. Her dad couldn't take care of her from Monday to Wednesday on most weeks, so I ended up having partial custody of her, and I made sure that she was up to date on all vaccines. About two weeks ago, we learned that because of the smoke that she had when she was an infant, she had bad asthma. Her mom was still allowed to see her every once in a while, and last week my niece stayed the night at her house for the day. Apparently, her and her friends were smoking weed and other things for hours while my niece was locked up in her room, forced to breathe in the smoke. She passed out from having an asthma attack and was taken to the hospital by an ambulance which was called by one of the responsible people at the party. My sister was arrested for child endangerment and child abuse, and she's probably going to prison. As for the other people at the party, nobody even knew until the end that my niece was even there. My niece should be fine, but we're watching to make sure that she's fine in the end. Our next Reddit post is from Camaro Days. This incident was so stupid that I can't really help but share the story since my friends keep telling me to. What I find most weird about this is that my car wasn't anything super special. It was just a yellow 09 B6 Chevy Camaro with black stripes. When I bought it, it was super cheap because the passenger side door had been smashed in somehow and there was already 130,000 miles on the odometer. But the title was still good, somehow, no idea why, nor do I really care. The car was sold to me via proxy. All I knew was the car looked like a good deal, so I bought it. A friend of mine who works in an auto body fixed it for me. He said that most of the damage was to the door itself, and I just needed a new door after he made a few tweaks to make sure everything was straight. Together, we managed to find a door at a salvage yard that was the same color. A little work, and the car looked almost new. I drove that Camaro for a year, before running into a random Karen at a supermarket last year in September. I was shopping for some stuff to make dinner, and I was about to head home when I found the Karen with her young son all over my car after I exited the store. I'm guessing the boy was around four years old. His mother was taking pictures of the kid sitting on my hood while the kid kept smiling and gleefully saying, Bumblebee! 
Yeah, I understand the reference. I've heard it all before. However, I don't like people messing with my property and I told the kid to get off. The Karen took one look at me and told me to mind my own business. Now, I'm a 29-year-old guy, but I have a bit of a baby face. Also, my casual clothing made me look like a teenager. So, I guess to her, I couldn't be someone who would have anything to do with such a nice car, despite the fact that it's actually a pretty common car. I told the Karen to get off my Camaro, and she bluntly told me there was no way that it was my car because I'm too young. I pulled out my keys and hit the alarm button on the remote. That made the alarm start blaring for a second, and her kid jumped off while screaming and crying because I'd frightened him. But rather than pay attention to her crying child, the Karen came running at me full speed and managed to shove me hard enough that I fell over. The next part is a bit hazy. I got a bump on the head, and that crazy B-word slurred every word that she was screaming at me. She stepped on my arm and pulled the keys from my hand before I really had a chance to react. Luckily, she didn't really hurt me that much. She wasn't a big woman, only about 5 foot 2 or so and really skinny, while I'm 6 foot 0 and over 170 pounds. When I got to my feet, she was comforting her crying kid and telling him that I was a mean person. I told her to return the keys, but she got hissy and said there was no way the Camaro was mine. I again stated that it was and I would only give her one more chance to return my keys. She didn't. Instead, she handed the keys to her kid, who started playing with the buttons on the remote and unlocked the doors. I'd had enough, and I pulled out my phone to call the cops. When the Karen saw that I was on the phone, she started screaming and charging at me again. Though, this time, I easily dodged her, and she nearly fell on the asphalt and screamed that I had assaulted her. I never even touched her, and I told her that. The 911 operator was listening to everything that was going on, and I quickly told the operator where we were while this insane woman was still screaming at me. Before long, two police cars showed up. At this point, the Karen had locked herself in my car with her son and started the engine to run the AC. I explained everything to the cops, and they knocked on the window of my Camaro to get the Karen to open up and give them her side of the story. She claimed the car was hers and that I was just some stupid, broke teenager that tried to carjack her. Then, she bragged that she had taken me down. The officer asked if that meant that she'd shoved me over, to which she bluntly said, yes. I told the cops to look in my glove compartment, where there was my insurance card and a copy of my registration. They could easily compare that info to the name on my license. When the Karen heard that, she got out of the car and finally admitted that it wasn't hers. But then she said that it was no way that it could be mine and that she just took the keys from me to find the real owner. That quickly earned her some shiny new bracelets and she was put screaming into the back of a police car. The parking lot had cameras, so it was easy to prove the assault. I only really got scratches, a bruise on my arm where she'd stepped on it, and a small bump on the head. After the Karen was taken back to the station, they found out that she was high on drugs. Which would explain why she was so nuts. I, of course, pressed charges. My testimony wasn't really needed since the police had the CCTV from the parking lot and the audio from the phone call. It turns out this was Karen's third offense and she got two years in prison. Oh, and her kid was taken from her. This whole incident made me rethink owning the Camaro because it had been a magnet for people who bothered me. So I sold it and basically got back all the money I'd put into it in the first place. I doubt that I'll want to own another sports car again. And OP clarifies in an edit. I know that Karen lost her son because of social media. I found out who she was and I looked into her online profiles. She had been blogging her woes calling me a monster because CPS took her kid over a little misunderstanding. I don't know about the rest of you, but if CPS took the kid that fast, then she was already on a watch list. And I know that she was on drugs because it was mentioned in court. My testimony wasn't needed, but that didn't mean that I wasn't there to watch. I took time off work just to go. She gave me a death glare when she was sentenced. Our next Reddit post is from Ketchin Trout. Years ago, I would often babysit my neighbor's 9-year-old daughter. He was a divorced father, with the kind of ex who would send him spreadsheets of child-raising expenses calculated to the penny with weekly invoices, complete with terms and penalties of her own choosing for late payments. He paid hefty child support and generally paid her invoices on time because she would cut off access to her kid if he didn't. His ex and I would sometimes text each other. 
She and I had a previous dust-up because a sudden weather change necessitated a jacket for the kid. We popped into the nearest discount store and I let her pick out a jacket. The kid loved it, but her mother threw a giant fit at me because it wasn't brand name. I blew it off, and the neighbor and I laughed about it when he reimbursed me. She gave me the silent treatment. Oh, no! Time moved forward, and the father always reimbursed the kid's expenses and encouraged fun and healthy activities. One day, he called me and apologized that he was getting held up at work, but the kid had an orthodontist appointment. He asked me to take her, I agreed, and he called the dentist to let them know. We got there, and the orthodontist wouldn't see her without a payment of $225. This was necessary. The kid's braces were hurting her. Her dad wasn't available, but I knew that he would reimburse me, so I put it on my credit card rather than call her snake of a mother. The kid got patched up and the dad reimbursed me. A few months later, I got a pass to do call from my card company. Repeat charges from the orthodontist. I let dad know and called the orthodontist, who told me that I signed an automatic payment agreement. I gave them my, heck no, I'm just the babysitter speech, but that didn't get far with them so I cancelled my card. The dad apologized profusely to me and reimbursed me. A month later, I got a nasty call from the orthodontist about my card declining. I kindly informed them that I am not the parent and I provided the snake's phone number. About an hour later, the snake is furiously calling and texting me. I just silenced my phone and checked it out later. She had maxed out my voicemail inbox. All of her text messages were about how I was abusing her child by denying her kid medical care. One voicemail was from the police, letting me know that she filed a complaint, how I could get a copy from my attorney, and inquiring about whether I wanted to file a counter complaint. I sure did. I moved out of state, and the prosecutor called me once just to ask questions. Then, I never heard back from the prosecutor. Last I heard from the kid's grandmother, the snake took a plea bargain, dad got custody, and grandma was enjoying a lot more time with the kid. And then, OP clarifies in an edit. Friends, credit card fraud is illegal. Charging stuff to someone else's card is credit card fraud. She basically ratted her own self out to police by filing a complaint that I wouldn't let her steal from me anymore. She probably pled guilty to theft by deception and forgery. I've never cared enough to try to find out. There's nothing in the world that obligates me to pay for the dental care of someone else's kid. This is such a stretch. Just, no, that's not a thing. That was our slash entitled parents. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episode. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.